Hello and welcome to Watches and Cocktails, the show where we make a cocktail and talk about a watch you should know and a watch you don't know. Most importantly, before we start the show, we make a popper drink. Why? Because I like to get tossed and talk about watches. Actually, I get my cameraman loaded because I can't keep my shit together enough to drink on camera, so enjoy, Steve. On this show, we'll make cocktails every man should know by heart. We won't be making complex cocktails, just ones you can easily remember. We also do giveaways of one of the watches from every episode that reaches 20,000 views. So share, share, share. I'm not a watch expert. I'm a 15 year enthusiast. I've been collecting everything from vintage to luxury to boutique and micro brands. Hey, you know, feel free to flame me in the Facebook group or troll me if you don't like my opinions, that's fine. But let's flame each other memes and talk mad shit. Just no violent threats, please. We start every episode with a cocktail. We're making a classic. I call this my Manhattan because I'm not using bitters in it because I don't really like it. Start with cocktail shaker filled with ice, two ounces of whiskey, or in my case, I like to do a little bit more. One ounce of vermouth. Don't go heavy on the vermouth. I don't add bitters because I don't know. I just kind of like, like this the way it is. Shake it up. And then serve in a proper cocktail glass without the ice. Well, I put some ice in there, but that's okay. All right, and then the final thing is you put in a cocktail cherry. I like to add a little of cocktail cherry juice and you're done. It is a very simple cocktail to make. Your friends and family will enjoy it. Now here's Steve. Enjoy your cocktail. Thank you. Today, we have two amazing watches. One is an absolute classic, the Tudor Pelagos 2021 black dial left hand watch. And the other is the upcoming 220 watches diver bill. Since 2009 and Tudor broke out from underneath the Rolex brand, they've really submitted their own identity. Still with the same founding ideals of having access to Rolex quality, Without the Rolex price, Tudor is coming to their own by making some of the best watches for your money. And they hold value, and even some go up. Tudor Pelagos is a nicely sized watch for my 7.5 inch wrist. Comes in type two titanium, has impressive dive specs, and amazing loom. The dial while playing is very striking to look at. And the titanium while lacking flash really cements this as a proper tool watch. Now for $5,000 less than a Rolex Submariner, I like this watch better. And with its 70 hour power reserve and chronometer certification, it's an impressive watch for the bang for the buck. This is luxury at only $4,575. The Diver Bill from 220 Watch is a classic bronze dive watch with a beautiful bronze patina dial. This is a beautiful example of watchmaking at its finest, and the style and character comes from classic dive watches from the early 70s. A small 40 millimeters. This dive watch brings us back to the era of smaller watches on men's wrists. Pulling inspiration from the early Rolex Submariner and the world's first watch with a pre-patina bronze dial. This watch is not only beautiful, but rugged in an amazing timepiece. Again, inspired by a diver who built or rebuilt the Winchester Cathedral, William Bill Walker, 220 builds watches around heroes of history. Let's jump into an interview we did with Jared about his watch and his brand. So let's jump into the interview. What got you started making watches? Right. Um, so I was, I've been in recruitment for 15 years and I was losing the passion for it. So I was actively looking for something else to do, to get involved in. I'd run my own business for about five years. Um, so I wanted to do something where 
I was the business owner. So um, that was in the back of my mind. Coincidentally, I was in Winchester Cathedral um, and I was looking at uh, a dive helmet of a famous local diver called William Walker. Um, and about 100 years ago, he dived under Winchester Cathedral, which is over 900 years old. And with his bare hands, he relayed the foundations of over a million bricks, which saved the cathedral from collapsing, which I always thought mm. was a wonderful story. I love history. I'm a diver, so I love that aspect of it. I was looking at his dive helmet, which is this beautiful uh, old uh, Sieben Gorman copper helmet with brass fittings. And I wondered why uh, no one had made a watch that used those materials. I thought if they were good enough for a dive helmet, they must be good enough for a watch. So um, leaving that, I went out uh, with the idea of trying to find a watch that fitted that spec uh, to buy. So I had a look online and I couldn't find anything. And I was shocked. I couldn't find any copper watches, which amazed me. Uh, and I definitely couldn't find any copper and brass watches. So um, I actually approached a local company <laughs> in Hampshire with the idea uh, and said, look, you know, I, I think this is interesting. What do you think about creating something like that? Be because I wanted to buy it as a customer. And they said, yeah, that's a nice idea, but that's not really something we're, we're interested in doing. <laughs> so um, I left the idea at the back of my mind. You know, I'd never been into anything like that. So it didn't even enter my head at the time to, um, to take it any further. And then about a year later, I was reading an article in The Economist about how relatively easy it was for small and medium scale designers in Europe to partner with manufacturing firms in China for small uh, production runs. And I, I thought of the watches again and I thought, I wonder how relatively easy. So with that in mind, I contacted about two dozen Chinese manufacturers with my idea. And all of them um, came back with sort of either they wanted to charge me a huge amount of money for the rendering or they came back with a design they had that they used like a parts bin design, which they already had. None of them were interested in an, or an original design. None of them wanted to do anything unique. All of them asked me, well, which watch are we going to copy for this project? And they didn't want to write this is going to be unique. It hasn't been done before. That's why we're doing it. So all of them, apart from one which came back with a very basic 2D image of the idea. And I looked at it and I thought, that's exactly, exactly what I wanted. <laughs> so I thought, um, I said to them, well, how do we take this to the next level? You know, what's next? And they said, well, we can create a, a prototype for you, a sample. So I thought, okay, well, I was, <laughs> the money was a bit tight at the time and I didn't want to invest too heavily into, into something I didn't know that would go anywhere. So the art, my idea was if I create one prototype initially, the worst case scenario is I've got a unique watch. So I sold one of my watches to fund the production of the prototype. And about six months later, maybe five months, the watch arrived. Uh, and again, it was exactly like with the 2D design. It was exactly what I had in mind. And I thought, this is I love this. This is exactly what, you know, what, what the idea was. And I thought right. and I thought. I think people might like this. I think other people might like this as well. You know, there's a uniqueness to it. There's a, there's a story to it. There's lots of things going for it. So from there, you know, I, I knew about crowdfunding. I knew about Kickstarter. Um, I had some, you know, running my own business, some idea of how to run a business. I'd never done anything in manufacturing. I'd never done anything in design. So 90% of it was very new and a very steep learning curve. And I made huge amounts of massive mistakes, especially to do with quality control and things like that. But, you know, I, I and I still am internally grateful to the first customers that took a punt on, on an idea. And, uh, I, you know, all the watches got delivered. A lot of them were late. Uh, some of them had to be changed. But, um, but I still think that it's a great watch and I still love the original prototype that I still have and I still wear. Cool. So tell us more about the inspiration. So the Diver Bill watch is the same thing. It's the same inspiration as the William Walker, correct? That's right. So my original idea was to create a watch that um, invoked the idea and the image of a dive helmet. If you looked at the 
William Walker's dive helmet and you looked mm. at the William Walker watch, mm. you see the design influence there. So it had to have a smooth bezel and it couldn't have any markings or anything like that. And it had to be quite plain. I did think about doing a dive watch because it's a diver, but all of the markings would, would have taken away from the direct inspiration of what I was trying to achieve as an original idea. Now, it didn't escape my notice or lots of potential customers and other people looking that you've designed a, a watch inspired by a diver, named after a diver, that isn't a dive watch, that has basically zero water resistance, which I thought, yeah, that's a fair enough comment. So my second watch <laughs> was almost predetermined to be a dive watch. A lot of people said, you know, we love the idea, we love the inspiration, but it's got to be a dive watch. So the original idea was to make the diver bill dive watch out of the same materials um, of a copper case and a brass bezel. But um, in looking further into that, they didn't lend themselves to the rugged ne necessities of a dive watch. So um, we moved slightly away from that and created everything out of bronze. Um, so it's the same inspiration. Now, there's a couple of design influences on, on the diver bill. So all divers in, in 100 years ago used to wear red woolly hats uh, under their helmets. So that's why Diver Bill is written in red. Diver Bill was William Walker's nickname. And I thought that the William Walker watch is quite smart. The Diver Bill is more sporty, more casual. So William Walker's nickname of Diver Bill, I thought suited the casual sportiness of the of the dive watch as well. So um, so that's where that's where we went with the second watch. Yeah. Cool. So why should someone buy a 220 watch? Well, every watch that we've created has something unique about it that hasn't been done in the industry before, first and foremost. So if you look at the William Walker watch, it's a copper case and a brass bezel. And that, when we produced that watch, and I think still to this day, that hasn't been done before. Also a combination of uh, things. So that has a domed sapphire crystal that has a convex crystal and a concave bezel. And as, again, as far as I know, we were the first people to do that. I think Patek might have done one watch, uh, the Calatrava. So we might have been one of two. Um, the other reason is we offer fantastic value for money in terms of what we deliver. There's a, always a unique story and a very specific historic design influence to our watches. You know, we always are looking to honour the past, honour heroes, tell a story and invoke sort of memories of those people and what they did uh, in the past. And we want that to come through a lot in our, in our timepieces. All of our watches, none of them are generic. You know, they're all very unique. Uh, I know a lot of companies say that, but ours really are. So you get a combination of things. So what are your other passions? Ah, my passions. I love scuba diving. I used to work uh, as a dive master. I love sailing. I recently took it up, well, recently, about three years ago. And I get the similar feeling as I do from diving. There's a freedom, um, which I absolutely adore in that. Uh, I've recently started motorcycling, which, uh, again, there's a freedom that I really, really enjoy in that. So I would say those three things are my main passions at the moment, as well as uh, watches and horology, history as well. I uh, studied history, uh, and that, that comes through, I think. Mm -hmm. in watches also well, what's coming from 220 in the future well it's pretty exciting um we've got a explorer inspired watch named after a very famous explorer that may have been the first man to summit everest uh 25 years before is officially known uh, and that's an interesting story that i look forward to telling and that's a beautiful watch um, there's a motor racing inspired watch coming named after Sir Sterling Moss, which is uh, a 50s design inspired chronograph, um, which is beautiful. And I have just finished uh, today, actually, um, a sailing inspired watch, which is, I think, going to be absolutely fantastic. Well, great. All right. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time for the interview today. And, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, people will find out more about your watches and be inspired to buy one. Thanks for your time, Jared. Thanks, Mike. Bye.
Technical specs on the Tudor Pelagos. Impressive specs for a dive watch being that it's type two titanium and comes with a free rubber strap and costs less than Omega, but has better specs. The movement in the 300M Omega is better in some ways, but I'm less concerned about getting my watch magnetized than I am about the power reserve. I, I love the idea of having a 70 hour power reserve. The bezel is titanium. Titanium loom bezel, is single direction and very solid with no play in the bezel at all. The loom is deep and strong and matches the intensity of the dial. I would imagine it's about 20 layers of X1 Super Low Noah. Swapping straps, uh, swapping out straps does require spring wire pliers and I wouldn't use a single-sided tool to remove the bracelet as you might scratch the case. Maybe best to have a jeweler do it for you. Measurements, 42 millimeter diameter, 40 millimeter case, 50 millimeter lug to lug, 42 millimeter bezel, so it's extremely wearable, 22 millimeter wide lugs, and 14.3 millimeters thick, so it's not too tall. Not as thin as this Breitling Super Ocean, but has the same dive specs, but still very comfortable. The material, again, class two titanium bezel and bracelet. I think they chose this for the density and the weight of the titanium as well the look. While class five is harder, class two is still harder than 316 now stainless. Also class two titanium is not prone to rust like class five, so you can't really make a diver out of a class five watch. This makes the watch feel slightly less heavy than a steel watch of similar dimensions. The clasp is a patented micro adjust clasp with an amazing three positions and a further extension with a spring that adjusts with your wrists throughout the day, as well as a diver extension. It's extremely comfortable to wear, especially when you feel the spring engaged. It feels like a seatbelt NATO as far as comfort is concerned. Water resistance is 500 meters or 1640 feet so resistance. So dive deep, not that anyone will take it diving really, but with this loom, you probably can. Dial and hands are ceramic, printed ceramic dial with loom paint indicators and fully loomed hands. They have at least 1.2 millimeters of loom on this watch, making it better than Omega or most Rolex models. I think it has seven layers of anti-reflective underneath. When looking at it, it does have a little glare, so they probably don't have AR on the top. Crown is titanium, really well-built screw down crown. And when you move it from position to position, it has a near click, so you know that setting the date will be reliable for years to come. The crown takes some effort to screw down, so you really know it can dive to 500 meters. The movement is a COS certified 70 hour reserve. Caliber MT5612, in-house movement. In testing this on my timographer, this was plus four seconds per day in four positions. The winding is automatic without manual wind. It's with a bi-directional rotor system. Wear it for a day and it'll fully charge the reserve. On the side here, you can see the helium escape valve for deep diving. It's really just for anyone who gets a crazy idea to dive to really deep, but it works. Now, onto the diver bill. The Swiss made watch, while small for a diver, has big performance. Diver Bill has performance specs regulated to five positions with plus two, minus two per day. The dimensions, 40 millimeters in diameter, 46 millimeters lug to lug, and 20 millimeter lug width, and 14 millimeter height, so it's relatively thin for a dive watch. And that's two millimeters of which, which is crystal. The movement, it's a cost performance, highly customized Swiss STP movement with a swan net regulator, hand regulated plus two seconds per day, cost performance, but not certified. Plus two, minus two, and two positions when tested on the timographer. The material is bronze, bronze case. And as you can see, quite a bit of patina over time. The straps, it comes with a bunt leather strap, a natural rubber strap, and a bronze NATO are included. Now coming with three straps is really awesome, but it's not quick release, but it's easy to switch. Water resistance is 300 meters or a thousand feet. Now built to the same standards that many other professional luxury dive watches, you can dive deep. And Jared, the owner, takes this watch diving all the time. The winding is automatic or hand wind, 20 winds to get 44 hours of reserve.
how does this watch make me feel? On the Pelagos, it makes me feel a bit cautious as it's titanium, and it makes me feel like I show others I believe in quality over flash. With its perfect dimensions for me, it doesn't feel like I'm wearing a huge diver, just a diver that fits and fits very well. I can wear this watch with everything. It feels like I own a proper tool watch. It also makes me question my preference for my Omega 300M. It's also fun having a left hand watch and wearing it on my right hand, while a bit confusing at first, is a novelty. First, I didn't like the complexity of the dial, but now I feel like it fits the vibe. It makes it more feel like an everyday man. The diver bill makes me feel old fashioned, rustic, and I found myself carefully selecting heritage wear outfits that match the vibe. I found myself staring at this watch all the time due to the beautiful dial, and it makes me feel like I appreciate beauty. The contrast of the indicators dial of gold to the bronze makes me feel unique. I found myself having fun pairing straps with what I might wear. Overall, I felt unique and different, but as if I appreciated real beauty. You know, it's weird. I feel proud of having this watch because it's so amazingly beautiful and a great value. Is this watch a good investment? Watches are not ideal investment vehicles. Now the Tudor holds its value and you will lose very little reselling it. And since you don't have to wait, the authorized dealer will not care if you sell it, which is nice. Unlike if you sell one of your sports Rolex, you might get cut off from your authorized dealer. As the manufacturer of the diver bill is not limiting production, it is not gonna hold value. Now, what does a watch say about me? The Pelago says, I don't buy into hype and care about owning a beautiful timepiece, but also a proper tool watch without any frills. It says I am rugged. It says I can afford nice things, but I'm a watch enthusiast, not in concerned with brands as much as I am with cool timepieces. The Diver Bill says, I'm unique, different. I appreciate beautiful things, but don't have to spend $10,000 to make someone notice me. It says, I don't care about the brand name. I care about the watch itself. All right, watch flaws. The Pelagos has a few flaws I would like to point out. First, I would have liked a bit more if they went with alternating brush and polished links to give it some flash for the dial and case. I think it would have looked more luxurious if they used white gold for the indicators and hands instead of just painted loop. The watch bracelet has some pretty sharp edges, which, you know, if you get it perfectly fit is fine, but if not, it can be uncomfortable and even touching it is uncomfortable. The matte color of the dial and the hands make it match the matte bracelet in the case, but I think I would love a bit more finish and make it watch a lot more eye-catching. The lack of the wine function makes me wonder, how exactly do you charge up that 70 hour power reserve? If it's bad to shake a watch to charge it, I imagine they designed the movement so it would be robust enough to handle that with the days with the wear. The biggest glaring flaw of the diver bill is its main attraction, bronze. It stains your skin green when wearing the rubber strap or NATO. You get a little green spot. It's kind of icky. Also, while the movement performance is very good, I would be happier with an ETA. Also, I feel like for the price, they should go for solid gold indicators and hands instead of gold plated or gold colored. It would just look so much more luxurious. Also, I feel like it is lacking a bit on the loom. Would I buy this? On the Pelagos, I think this is a great addition to my collection. Diver Bill, I prepaid for both the black dial and the bronze. Now finally, on to the giveaway. Every video review we shoot will have a great giveaway. If this video reaches 20,000 views in a month, we're giving away this amazing watch from 220, worth $1,750. To enter, subscribe, join our Facebook group, Share the video that's posted in the group to your page and then tag two friends who like watches. Then in the same thread, comment with a picture of your favorite watch and a guess number on how many views it will receive. In one month, the first person with the closest number wins. Winner will be contacted. Watch video must reach 20,000 views for the giveaway to happen. So share, share, share. Remember to comment the number of views you think will be in a month's time and over 20,000. 
Thank you so much for David, our producer, Casper, our editor, David, our executive producer, and Steve for making the show happen. This show is sponsored by 220 Watch, but they have no editorial say in the content, and we only review watches that we generally like. Now on the 220 Watch Diver Bill, our discount code to save $200 is wrist candy and order below. So what are your thoughts on both watches? What are your thoughts on the review? Should I get drunk on camera or stay sober? Let's talk about it in our Facebook group. Please like our video, subscribe for great watch content every week, we do review videos every two weeks with other topics the alternating week. Follow us for lots of watch shots with an iPhone 8. I know, I know, get a new phone. Cheers until next time.